Hi guys, I'm Zach. And I'm Lauren. And we're here with Kennedy Violins today and we're going to talk to you about what it takes to do some annual maintenance to your violin. Just like cars or anything else, you should look to be doing some maintenance. Um, this is kind of like an annual thing that uh, I tend to recommend that people do for their violin. So the three main things that I like to get taken care of after a year are changing strings, a bow rehair, and then just a general cleaning or just have a master luthier take a look at my violin. Um, so for the rehair, we have a bow here um, that's in dire need of a rehair. But as you can see, it's very, very discolored here, kind of by the frog. That's from like kind of your thumb making contact with the bow here. And then the rest of the hair on the bow is quite yellow. Um, so at this point, the bow isn't really usable. And I've had students come up to me and saying, yeah, my bow can't retain rosin. It's I rosin it all the time. And actually, when it gets to this point, it won't retain rosin anymore. So it's really important to either replace your bow if you have a bow that's just not, not rehairable or just to get a simple rehair um, to replace the hair on the bow. Yes, and a rehair is something that is going to be uh, need to be done by a luthier. And most of this stuff, you know, it's great if you can take your instrument in for a yearly checkup um, with a qualified luthier. Um, we do offer bow rehairs, I will say as well, not only locally, but we can do them by mail when people will ship us their bow. Um, it's just basically the cost of the bow rehair and shipping. And so we can do that if you're in a place where you don't have a local luthier who will rehair your bow. But most of the stuff I'm gonna show you today is stuff that you can kind of do on your own. All right, so now we're gonna go over some of the cleaning and kind of what I do yearly. So of course, every time you're done playing, it's just a good idea to wipe down your instrument, wipe down the strings, anywhere that you might get rosin. Sometimes also I'll take the bow and just wipe down along the stick. Um, you don't really need to do anything to the hair. Probably the less you touch the hair, the best. Um, so, but what some people will do after a year, you know, even if you're wiping it down over time, just like stuff happens, you get sweat or other things on your instrument, and it's kind of nice to keep it a little cleaner. Um, so there are a couple products that we sell to help with that. So one of them is going to be kind of a full instrument care kit. Uh, that's the Colstein's uh, cleaning kit. They actually come with a bottle of cleaner and then a bottle of polish. Um, the cleaner, you know, definitely removes a lot of. So if you have an instrument that has like a lot of rosin buildup or you're someone who doesn't clean your instrument well just using the cleaner first and then going back with the polish does help it does come with a nice big polishing cloth as well which is kind of nice um, we actually sell our instruments with our polishing cloth and of course we you know uh, offer them for sale on their own we have a five pack for like five dollars and you know they work really well for just a microfiber cleaning cloth both for yearly cleaning as well as just cleaning after you're done um, the one I use the most is probably the hill cleaner and polish because it's a uh, kind of all in one and usually after about a year of playing it's a good idea to kind of clean your instrument a bit you don't need a lot with this so um, we'll open this up and uh, this is one we've already used a bit around the shop um, and I think now these are about $10. You don't need a lot, so just a little dab. And then I usually start kind of in the higher rosin areas, which this instrument has been being played on in our shop here. So it's got a little rosin. And I'll kind of just start slowly working around the instrument so you can see kind of like the rosin extra buildup of that is coming off a little bit more. Um, and you know, I'll kind of go through it slowly. You don't want to rub too hard. And, you know, as I said, a little bit goes a long way, but it is really nice to keep your, your instrument clean over time. You know, it does help protect the varnish over, after a while too. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing that I try to do every year. Another thing that people will do is sometimes you'll get an ex, a little bit of extra, you know, rosin buildup on the end of your fingerboard that actually can be somewhat hard to clean. Um, so you have to be very careful, but I've got a little bit of alcohol in a spray bottle here, and you never want to get any sort of alcohol-based product on the finish of your instrument. It will damage the finish on your instrument, but on the fingerboard, it uh, tends to help clean it up a bit. So I will apply a little bit sometimes, and um, you know, you can actually help take some off your strings as well, but you can also kind of get some off the end of your fingerboard and some of like the gunk on the end, which will kind of discolor it. If you get a little bit on there, it'll start turning it like slightly discolored. Um, it wasn't super dirty, so you're not gonna see as much on that, but it does help clean that. Sometimes if you have your strings all the way off as well, you can use just a little bit of mineral oil to help kind of cover the fingerboard back up and kind of seal it in, um, which is the same thing people use for cutting boards and things like that. I will say that I've had a lot of people complain about their sound sounding really like, like um, 
crunchy mm -hmm. and just like really scratchy, um, cleaning your instrument does help. Right, because a lot of the times, especially when there's rosin buildup on the strings, it can affect the sound quality. Um, so I, I usually see people notice a huge difference when they clean their strings, and they're like, "Wow, this sound is so much clearer and so much more resonant." It's like, yes. Yes. Now that's for if your strings are under a year old. If mm -hmm. you have hit this annual point, it will be time to change your strings. All right. So uh, as part of your string change, to one of the things you're going to want to do is also make sure your fine tuner fine tuners are backed out so that you're tuned up with the pegs first, and then you get the full adjustability of your fine tuners if you have them um, to use your violin. Another thing you can look over is just kind of checking to make sure that your violin is in good overall health. One thing you'll want to go along the seams, which are along where the top joins to the back and sides, and just making sure you don't have any open seams. Sometimes they're not readily apparent. You can even press on them a little. Um, sometimes even just tapping on the instrument, it'll kind of clap back at you a little bit if there is a seam open. So that's something that you can look for that way. Um, but really it's probably best if you have a luthier look at it. Yeah, as a teacher and as a professional player, I highly recommend if you can, go get it checked out once a year by a professional luthier. Um, I'm really lucky that I get to, I work at a violin shop so I can have luthiers just look at my violin whenever I have a problem or for a yearly checkup. So, but these are a few things that you can do at home. Yeah, and if you do have any questions about uh, your violin or performing any yearly maintenance for it, you can always go ahead and give us a call. We're all players and musicians here and we'd be happy to help.